boy George. He beat a guy with a metal chain after cuffing him to a radiator. Should make for an interesting sequence in his forthcoming biopic. It was a male escort he hired then held captive for 24 hours and abused him sexually as well as physically. He blamed his drug abuse for his behavior. Elvis Presley and Priscilla age 14. Right out in the public, no one batted an eye. Her parents allowed her to go on a trip under the condition that Elvis pay for a first-class round trip and arrange for her to be chaperoned at all times. And that she'd write home every day. Elvis agreed to all these demands, and Priscilla flew to Los Angeles. Elvis told her they were going to Las Vegas, and to throw her parents off the scent, he had Priscilla pre-write a postcard for every day they'd be away to be mailed from Los Angeles by a member of his staff. Rick James, singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist and producer, kidnapped two women with his wife while on separate crack binges. NBA Hall of Famer Karl Malone raped and impregnated a 12-year-old. And then denied that the kids were his and refused to pay any child support. Karl Malone is one of the biggest pieces of human excrement there is, and he's still treated like a god by the Utah fanbase. Tom Cruise is the celebrity face for a massive cult that kidnaps, rapes, and is likely involved in human trafficking and child marriages. The cult that outlawed the IRS. But yes, Mission Impossible was cool I guess. It's honestly so terrifying, if anyone wants to look this up look up Leah Ramini. She openly talks about what happened while she was in the cult and actually has stories of Tom Cruise and being a celebrity in Scientology. The scariest part is the lengths they've gone to in an attempt to silence her and discredit the documentary. They really, really don't want the general public to know about the horrors that go on in their churches. Is no one gonna mention Caitlyn Jenner hitting that pregnant woman and forcing her into traffic? Then getting the Woman of the Year award? I guess I remembered that wrong. Turns out it was an elderly woman. And the woman died when she was hit by a Hummer. On an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, comedian Nikki Glaser talked about the recent Comedy Central Alec Baldwin roast, in which Caitlyn Jenner participated. Nikki had planned to roast Jenner with a bunch of jokes about how Jenner had killed someone, but Jenner refused to participate in the roast if those jokes were made. Jared Leto, the singer of the rock band 30 Seconds to Mars, has been accused of rape by half a dozen 13 to 15 year old girls. He has been accused of rape or sexual assault by other women too. I think I remember reading something about him having consensual sex with partners, but then becoming violent during it. Someone replied, I 100% believe that. At 14 years old I grew up in a house for teenage girls that have experienced trauma and we met some real famous people sometimes, the house was near LA, that would volunteer. He met us at the girls home one time to promote his band and then had the home bring us to his home to record in his studio. He gave us a tour of his house and there were so many inappropriate things he could have put away knowing there were underage girls coming. It's almost like he wanted us to see it and gauge how some reacted to the sexually inappropriate things. He also was extremely inappropriate basically flirtatious with some of the young girls. Weird pedo vibes definitely. Piers Morgan, the current co-anchor of the ITV breakfast program Good Morning Britain was the editor of the Daily Mirror during the Iraq War. He published photos that he knew were fake of American and British troops abusing Iraqi prisoners. He was fired, but somehow managed to make a successful media career out of it. Transformers actor Mark Wahlberg beat and blinded a Vietnamese guy just because he was Vietnamese. Also this, in June 1986, Wahlberg and three friends chased after three black children while yelling kill the n-word, kill the n-word and throwing rocks at them. The next day, Wahlberg and others followed a group of school children taking a field trip on a beach, yelled racial epithets at them, threw rocks at them, and summoned other white males who joined in the harassment. Actress Emma Roberts beat the hell out of her then-boyfriend Evan Peters, then continued to co-star in the same show as him. She left Evan Peters with a bloodied nose and bite marks after some people called the cops on them when they had a fight in their hotel room in Canada. It says a lot about how obvious the abuse is that when the cops turn up to a domestic violence case and arrest the woman instead of the man. They continued to date until early this year. Maybe she changed, but if I'm completely honest, I just feel relieved on Evan Peters' behalf. Actor and producer Roman Polanski is still getting awards and standing ovations for his films. In 1977, three years after making Chinatown, Polanski was arrested at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel for the sexual assault of 13-year-old Samantha Gailey. It took place at Jack Nicholson's house. After the rape reportedly took place and Samantha walked into the house, 
Nicholson's then-girlfriend Angelica Houston saw Samantha, an obviously underage girl, and thought nothing of it, thinking that the girl was rather rude for not wanting to be social. Hollywood loves pedophiles. Rapper Chris Brown was driving a vehicle with Robin F., known as Rihanna, as the front passenger on an unknown street in Los Angeles. Robin F. picked up Brown's cellular phone and observed a three-page text message from a woman who Brown had a previous sexual relationship with. A verbal argument ensued and Brown pulled the vehicle over on an unknown street, reached over Robin F. with his right hand, opened the car door and attempted to force her out. Brown was unable to force Robin F. out of the vehicle because she was wearing a seat belt. When he could not force her to exit, he took his right hand and shoved her head against the passenger window of the vehicle causing an approximate one-inch raised circular contusion. Robin F. turned to face Brown and he punched her in the left eye with his right hand. He then drove away in the vehicle and continued to punch her in the face with his right hand while steering the vehicle with his left hand. The assault caused Robin F.'s mouth to fill with blood and blood to splatter all over her clothing and the interior of the vehicle. Brown looked at Robin F. and stated, I'm going to beat the sh out of you when we get home. You wait and see. The detective said Robin F., then used her cell phone to call her personal assistant Jennifer Rosales, who did not answer. Robin F. pretended to talk to her and stated, I'm on my way home. Make sure the police are there when I get there. After Robin F. faked the call, Brown looked at her and stated, You just did the stupidest thing ever. Now I'm really going to kill you. Brown resumed punching Robin F. and she interlocked her fingers behind her head and brought her elbows forward to protect her face. She then bent over at the waist placing her elbows and face near her lap in, an, attempt to protect her face and head from the barrage of punches being levied upon her by Brown. Brown continued to punch Robin F. on her left arm and hand, causing her to suffer a contusion on her left triceps, sick, that was approximately two inches in diameter and numerous contusions on her left hand. Robin F. then attempted to send a text message to her other personal assistant, Melissa Ford. Brown snatched the cellular telephone out of her hand and threw it out of the window onto an unknown street. Brown continued driving and Robin F. observed his cellular telephone sitting in his lap. She picked up the cellular telephone with her left hand and before she could make a call he placed her in a headlock with his right hand and continued to drive the vehicle with his left hand. Brown pulled Robin F. close to him and bit her on her left ear. She was able to feel the vehicle swerving from right to left as Brown sped away. He stopped the vehicle in front of 333 North June Street and Robin F. turned off the car, removed the key from the ignition and sat on it. Brown did not know what she did with the key and began punching her in the face and arms. He then placed her in a headlock positioning the front of her throat between his bicep and forearm. Brown began applying pressure to Robin F.'s left and right carotid arteries, causing her to be unable to breathe and she began to lose consciousness. She reached up with her left hand and began attempting to gouge his eyes in an attempt to free herself. Brown bit her left ring and middle fingers and then released her. While Brown continued to punch her, she turned around and placed her back against the passenger door. She brought her knees to her chest, placed her feet against Brown's body and began pushing him away. Brown continued to punch her on the legs and feet, causing several contusions. Robin F. began screaming for help and Brown exited the vehicle and walked away. A resident in the neighborhood heard Robin F.'s plea for help and called 911, causing a police response. An investigation was conducted and Robin F. was issued a domestic violence emergency protective order. His latest music video has 33 million clicks on YouTube with nearly half a million likes. Salman Khan, a very famous Indian actor, killed someone by driving his car over them. I forget the specifics, but he drove his car over one or more people who were sleeping on the side of the road, killing at least one of them. He carried on with his acting career and on Indian TV because he is famous. He was later found guilty, 13 years after the incident, then appealed and there was cleared and charges quashed. Comedian, actor and musician Andy Dick has sexually assaulted people an absurd amount of times and also got Phil Hartman's wife back into drugs which led to her murdering Hartman in an intoxicated state. You would think he would have been ruined in the hashtag MeToo movement. But apparently we pass it off like ha, huh, that's classic Andy Dick. To those saying Andy Dick doesn't really get a pass because everyone hates him. He's not in prison which is where anyone else would end up for doing half the things he did, so I'd call that a huge pass. John Lennon beat his wife, he yelled in his son's ear so loudly that he's now definite. A child. Imagine all the people, living life in peace. Actor John Hamm led a fraternity pledge around the house, by a claw hammer around his testicles, 
while other frat members beat him so hard his spine was fractured and he nearly lost a kidney. Ham later referred to it as a bummer of a thing that happened. I hate this, not just because he hurt someone, but because it was so so humiliating, and shows an utter disregard for other people. Jerry Seinfeld dated a 17-year-old girl in high school, when he was 39 years old. I know it isn't illegal. He had money, fame, and was at the height of his show. And he chooses to date a 17-year-old who is still in high school? It might not be illegal and as bad as murder, rape or kidnapping, but it's still pretty scummy. Gwyneth Paltrow. She's a con artist and manages a MLM as well as recommending women treat their illness by putting rocks up their vagina and steaming their privates causing harm to people. She admitted on Jimmy Kimmel that she has no idea if anything really works. You can say she's an idiot, or just that she's a sociopath that loves making money off hurting other people. There's a soccer player in Brazil who killed his mistress, quartered her body and gave it to dogs to eat, to make it harder for police to find out. He went to jail for a few years and now he is playing again and he's probably gonna have a pretty comfortable life and have his career back. His name is Bruno Fernandes de Souza. And to finish off the video, we have a little medley. Jimmy Page was 26 when he started calling 14-year-old Lori Maddox his girlfriend. Mick Jagger had a few rounds with Maddox around the same time. Also of the Rolling Stones, Bill Wyman started dating 13-year-old Mandy Smith when he was 47. He got her mother's permission. Steven Tyler convinced the mother of 16-year-old Julia Holcomb to make him her legal guardian then snorted blow from next to her hospital bed while she was having an abortion. David Bowie, the beloved, managed to get Lori Maddox's virginity and got her to bring her 15-year-old friend along, in addition to many other underage girls. Jerry Lee Lewis of course married his 13-year-old cousin, she still believed in Santa on their honeymoon. Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll himself was routinely in trouble with underage girls and even the fabled romance with Priscilla is a tale of sexual interference. She was 14 when they met. Chuck Berry was arrested for crossing state lines with a 14-year-old prostitute. He was also recording women in the washroom of the restaurant he owned. Courtney Love says she gave Ted Nugent a blowjob when she was 12. He also adopted a 17-year-old so he could bang her without getting charged with kidnapping. He even wrote a song about avoiding pedophilia charges. Anthony Kiedis, Red Hot Chili Peppers, wrote songs about it too, Catholic School Girls Rule, is about his hooking up with a 14-year-old at 23. Iggy Pop also wrote songs about sleeping with 13-year-olds too. Check out the lyrics to look away. Marvin Gaye knocked up his wife's 15-year-old niece. Don Henley, The Eagles, was charged after paramedics found him with two naked girls, aged 15 and 16. Isn't our society sick and hypocritical? In my video, What Happens to Sex Offenders in Prison? You hear stories of pedophiles being beaten and killed in prison. Some of them for having relationships with 17-year-old girls. But as soon as someone is famous, they do not only get away with it, but the general public becomes ignorant of their crimes. Again, celebrity worship is a modern cult, and these people can keep doing what they do because we allow it. Technically everyone should boycott their films and music. But we don't do that, because we don't want to accept that our childhood heroes are the scum of the earth. We are all hypocrites allowing a corrupt entertainment industry to go on as if nothing happened. Hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more inconvenient truth that no one wants to talk about. Share your thoughts about the topic in the comments below, and let us know if you are a fan of one of the artists mentioned.